What's going on guys, Jizzy here back to my channel. Tonight I'll be doing a review for Smackdown and Rampage. Just going to get to it then and all that stuff. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so the Brock segment was very long and stuff. So let's go ahead and get this over with. So the bloodline kicked things off. The feminine sounds of Roman Reigns theme music hits. And out comes the bloodline to kick off this week's show. Roman Reigns, Solo Sokoa, Jimmy Uso, and Paul Heyman all made their way out and head to the ring together. After they settle in the ring, the tribal chief soaks up the, mo mo the moment and then begins, uh, Glen uh, Glendale, Arizona, acknowledge me. The crowd reacts, Rain says it used to be louder. He then tries saying, Phoenix, Arizona, acknowledge me. The fans boo and start chanting, Rocky, Rocky. I don't know if people chant Rocky or they love him or hate him. I don't know. Don't want to ask you why. Okay. <clears throat> Rain says he's gonna try this one uh last this tried this one la uh, last time <clears throat> if, and uh <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> if and if we don't get on the same page he's fulfilled his contractual obligation and he's leaving he tries his opener a third time he then shakes his head and says we're done here he tells Heyman to fire up the jet Heyman tells him they have further business. We can't uh, leave yet. Just give me a moment. Paul Heyman then takes over the mic. He says, in just a moment, the People's Champ and the BDE, best damn ever, of WWE, the greatest movie star of all time, will be out here live. The Rock. After this commercial break, he adds, and on that note, we head to a commercial break. Excuse me while I drink my um, cranberry juice. Finally, The Rock comes to Glendale, Arizona. When we turn, The Rock's theme is already playing. And we see him <clears throat> in the middle of walking out on the stage in a long sleeves version of one of his heel $5,000 shirts. He stays on the stage for a while for a while, and soaks up the reaction. But it starts positive and shifts to booze. Uh, he walks... Uh, side to side and then begins with his walk to the ring with shades on he sells in the ring with the bloodline standing together on him on one side and himself on the other fans chant rocky 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 but then loudly boo as he begins raising the microphone to his face throg asks if the fans are sure they want to boo him he says he's got some gospel and some news to share apparently Glendale is 10 miles away from Phoenix, assuming the answer is yes, but are there a lot of people from Phoenix here tonight? He says he knew it. He says he did some research and learned the number one city for cocaine and meth use is Phoenix, Arizona. And here's what that means. Finally, your life has meaning. Meaning. Because finally you cactus loving crackheads have something worth shooting in your veins. He says before doing his finally the rock has come back to Arizona catch rate. The fans respond uh, with loud rocky rocky chants. He goes about selling it out everywhere he goes. He's He says wrestling is cool again because of the rock Roman Reigns and the bloodline. He brings up Cody Rhodes challenge. He says no. He then says they have a counter offer. He calls Seth Rollins a walking cloud emoji and then issues a challenge for night one of WrestleMania 40, the biggest tag team match in history of WWE. <clears throat> the biggest tag match in the history of pro wrestling, Curry Rhodes and Seth Rollins uh, against Roman Reigns and The Rock. But it ain't gonna just be a regular tag match. If you two jabronis beat us on night two, your championship match will be free for the bloodline. No Jimmy, no Solo, no Wiseman, no Rock. They'll be barred from night two. They'll get contracts to make it official. If you beat us on night one, then Cody, you got a shot to finish your story one on one against Roman Reigns. But if The Rock and Roman Reigns beat them on night one, um, then on night two. Cody, wrote, Cody versus Roman is bloodline rules, which means anything goes maybe 
Rock sits alongside Pat McAfee for commentary. Maybe Jimmy Uso is the ref. Maybe Solo sings the national anthem. The fans uh, pop for Solo lineup and head up cu cutting Rock off with loud Solo, Solo chants. He says, or The Rock will just walk in the ring and bash Cody brazen and it'll be illegal. Le legal. Uh, he tells Cody he and his walking clown shoe show um, says have some thinking to do. He wants her their answer next week in Dallas. He says if they don't accept it, excuse me, The Rock will do any everything in his power to make sure he doesn't win the title. <clears throat> Roman is calmly but sturdy response to Rock before agreeing to go along with this idea. He says. He'll go along with it, but he needs The Rock to do one thing first. Acknowledge me. He stares The Rock down. Fans go nuts. The Rock takes his sunglasses off. Lorraine's my family. I acknowledge you as my travel chief. He sticks his hand out. Rain shakes it. The two hug. Rock wraps up with his catchphrase. Very entertaining and 40 minutes long. 40 minutes long opener. <laughs> so yeah, it was that long. <clears throat> 40 minutes of that segment which never barely happens in WWE alright back today we see Austin Theory, Grinson Waller watching footage on their phone and laughing at, about it R Randy Orton comes in and pretends to laugh along <clears throat> with them before telling them they, got, they get to choose which one of them gets their ass kicked by later tonight Waller tells Orton that Theory was saying earlier he wanted to fight him Orton slaps Theory on the back and says good and walks off. Theory confronts Waller for again throwing him under the bus. Waller tries spinning it like it's a main event against Orton. Orton uh, against Orton and that's the good thing. We head to another course break. Naomi versus Tiffany Stratton which is the first match. We return from the break. We see Tiffany Stratton in the middle of making her entrance to the ring. Already in the ring and is her opponent Naomi. The bell sounds and we're officially all going to this one. Our first match of the evening at 45 minutes deep into the two hour of the show. Yikes, that's what it says on there. Uh, the fans in Melee chant Tiffy time, and the commentators acknowledge her gaining over with fans as of late. Stratton starts off strong, but then Naomi takes over after Naomi hits a uh, face buster. She goes for the cover, but Stratton kicks out, kicks out and rolls out to the uh, floor re to recover. <clears throat> now she does. We uh we head to a mid match commercial break as we so uh settle back in from the break we see Stratton in the offensive lead Naomi starts to fire up for a combat but Stratton cuts it short and it ends up off the win to continue her recent recent momentum so the winner is Tiffany Stratton. All right, next match is the undisputed WWE Women's Tag Team Championships Bailey and Dakota Kai versus Kabuki Warriors. For the champions, now we shoot to a video package looking at the history of, of damage control, which sets us up for our second match of the evening, which features four of the damage control members um, doing battle with the Unspeed WWE Tag Team Championship on the line. With that note, the theme for Bailey hits, and now she comes with Dakota Kai. The two head to the ring as we uh, head to a pre match commercial break. When we return, the Kabuki uh, Warriors, accompanied by Eel Sky, make their way out and head to the ring for this title defense. All four women collide, and the fight is merely on. The fight is merely on. Sorry, uh, we see Bailey and Oscar end up kicking things off for their respective teams. Bailey gets beaten down, and Oscar and Curry soon take turns beating her down. Bailey finally gets to her corner for the tag, but Dakota hops off. The apron. Dakota Kai reveals she set Bailey up. Bailey fights off Asuka and Sane heads out out to fight Kai for screwing her over. But all of Damage Control team end up including the Kabuki Warriors, Dakota Kai, and Eel Sky to beat down Bailey in four on one fashion in the ring. So the winners are no con there was no contest to so nobody won. Um Braun Breaker versus Xion uh, Quinn, if that's how you say it. Um, we see Braun Breaker walking backstage as he, uh, as he, as he's up next. When we return on that note, we head to another commercial break. As we sail in, 
uh, back from the break, we see Diamond Control walking back, saying he's laughing after what they just did to Billy. Jay Cargo stops him in their tracks. She walks out to meet with Nick Aldis. Back inside the arena, Brown Breaker makes his way out to the ring for our next match of the evening. Already in the ring, it's his opponent, Zion Quinn. The bell sounds. Breaker hits a spear. One, two, three. The bell sounds. Literally. Uh, so yeah, the winner is Brown Breaker. Our right, next match is Carlito versus Santos Escobar. Uh, Cody Ro Cody oh, sorry, Corey Graves and Wayne Barrett point out that is the Damage Control isn't the only faction to break up in recent weeks slash months. With that said, we see an elaborate uh, video package looking at the LWO uh, splitting up and Santos Escobar reforming uh, Legolo del Fantasma. After the package wraps up, we return inside the arena where Carlito's theme hits. He makes his way out to the ring for the, his scheduled um, street fight against Santos Escobar. As he settles in the ring, we shift gears and head to a pre-match commercial break. We return from the break is in, in, in memory of graphic errors for the late Michael Virgil Jones, who passed away earlier this week. Carlito is finishing up his entrance in the arena as Corey Grace does a live and uh, live ad re read uh, Carlito's theme cuts off at Sandals Escobar's place. Out comes Sandals Escobar accompanied by the rest of Legolo del Fantasma for this straight fight. They stand back as Escobar heads to, to the ring by himself. The bell sounds and the fight is on. After some early back and forth action, fans chant, start chanting, we want apples. Uh, Carlito reaches under the ring but doesn't pull out an apple. Instead, he pulls out a candlestick for the big pop. He reaches back under the, this time. He does pull out an apple. Why didn't he just deliver the apple for some? Um, anyways, Santos takes over uh, before he can do anything. On that note, we head to a mid-match mid -match break when we return. We see Santos dominating Carlito fighting back and stuffs a trash can over Santos and then beats the piss out of him, piss out of it with a candlestick. A table is set up as Carlito seems to have this one finished up. Uh, out comes uh, Legolo del Fantasma. They all beat up Carlito and it seems to be over. But somehow Carlito kicks out. Uh, Legolo del, del Tasma, Fantasma began setting, setting up another table. As they do, out comes the LWO duo to help Carlito even out the numbers. His defenders, Legolo del Fantasma, end up beating them all down. Rey Mysterio's theme hits, and the crowd erupts as he comes out on crutches. The commentators talk about him not being medically clear. Legolo del Fantasma knows he's on crutches, and now to bully him, Rey reveals he was playing possum and starts beating them down with the crutches. Carlito uh, finishes Santos and gets the win. So the winner is Carlito. Alright, finally, um, Randy Orton versus Austin Theory. Uh, main event time. <coughs> Backstage, we see LA Knight looking for AJ Styles and causing hell in the process. Nick Aldis approaches him, and the two have two words. After that, we head back inside the arena, where Corey Graves and Wade Barrett announce Logan, Paul, Logan Paul's uh, return, <sighs> and Bobby Lashley versus Cameron Cross for next week's show. Yay. Uh, inside the arena, we hear the familiar sounds of Kevin Owens' theme song, out comes the prize fire to join uh, Graves and Barrett on special guest commentary for our final match of the evening. Austin Theory's theme hits. Yeah, out he comes with Grayson Waller for our final match of the this week's pro, pro, uh, program. On that note, uh, out. On that note, uh, we had to a quick mat, quick pre-match commercial break. Upon returning, the theme for Randy Orton uh, hits. Theme. Uh, hits out comes uh, the apex power to a big pop from the Glendale crowd. He sells in the rain and the bell sounds to get this one officially off and running. Um, Orton dominates the early offense, uh, but when the action hits the floor, things change. After Grayson Ward provides a distraction, we see Theory hit a big slam Orton on the edge of the commentary desk. On that note, we shift gears and head to a mid mesh commercial break. Our final uh, event uh, advertising timeout of the evening. Upon returning from the break, we see the action has resumed inside the ring, and s still Theory, who is very much in the offensive lead, Owens jokes about how all the monitors are broken at commentary now because of Theory's actions. Um, before the break, Orton fights back, and he stops Theory 
as he has to the top rope. Um, there he goes for the block for a blockbuster off the top, but Orton adjusts with a super uh, plex in midair. Orton heads out and slams Waller on the commentary desk. Owens gloats, but uh, um, about on tying Waller's shoe afterwards. Orton hits a draping DT on Theory in the ring and drops to the mat and pounds it, entering by Viper Mode. Austin Theory avoids an RKO and hits a blockbuster for a near fall attempt. Fans break out into Randy Randy chants as Theory continues to work over the WWE legend. Theory hits a big um, running forearm for another close uh, pin attempt. Theory goes for a draping DDT on Orton, but Orton avoids, avoids it. Theory goes for a rolling leaping spot, but rolls and leaps right into a perfectly timed Orton KO from Orton. Orton covers him and gets the win. Waller hits the ring to attack Orton outdoors, but Owens drops his head and hits the ring to help out Waller and Theory double team Owens. But Owens fights back and Theory out with a stunner. Waller avoids the stunner, but turns into an RKO from Orton. Orton and Owens look at each other and then go about their business. We see highlights of the main event after they wrap up. Orton is posing on the rows as his theme plays, and Owens stands in the middle of the ring. That's how the visual ends. Uh, so yeah, it was good. It was kind of good stuff. The show. So yeah, but man, I didn't expect that segment to be long with The Rock, <laughs> which is crazy. All right. So anyways, let's go and get to a W Rampage, which is next. All right. We go ahead to the first match is. Rugio versus Casanoli as I drink my cranberry juice again. Alright. Yep. Excuse me. Alright, we're shooting inside the uh, great um great Southern Bank Arena in Springfield. Uh where the commentary Team welcome with us to the show as the fire is below and cameras pans out. Alright, the theme for Rugio Rugio oh, how you gonna say hits and out comes the masked man from CM CMLO for our next opening contest. He lets a kid in the crowd try a mask he's holding on uh, but then takes it back from him and poses in the ring with it and and a title tilt and a title belt he holds and CMLO. <clears throat> Now we hear the familiar sounds of the theme for Claudio. Uh, out, uh, out outcomes the Blackpool Combat Club member of himself for this one, for this one-on-one -on -one contest. The bell sounds are official. Running with this one, Casanova dominates early on with power and straight advantages over Rugio. Rugio um, starts to pick up the pace and hits some high flying um and fast pace spots. He hits a big dive into Claudio on the floor for a big pop. The fans even chant, starting his name back in the ring. Uh, Ru you know, uh, comes off the top rope with a flying crossbody splash, but Casanova rolls through and decks the man from CML before taking back over the on fence. <coughs> Excuse me. Danny Magic, uh, Matt Menard tells Nigel McGinnis, Why don't you back off, dude? On commentary, as they start bickering back and forth, Casanova. Knocks uh, Rugio out to the floor and then runs him into the barricade as the action resumes in the ring. Claudio, class, uh, Claudio uh, continues to pummel the smaller uh, Rugio uh, and goes for a cover. But, excuse me, I'm sorry. But he kicks out after the count of two. On that note, we should gears ahead to a mid match commercial break as the opening contest continues. Um, when we turn, we see uh, some back and forth action, and then Claudio uh, gets uh, Rudy in the giant swing. He elbows the crap out of him all over John Moxie style, and then face plans him for the pinfall victory. At the match, Claudio uh, helps Rudy up and offers to shake his hand after telling the crowd to give him a hand. They do shake hands. Claudio pulls him for a hug. But then lifts him up and blasts him with a low boat. Another CMLL guy comes out with a chair to run Claudio off. So the winner is Claudio Casanoli for the first match. Alright, the second match right here is Lance Archer and the Righteous 
versus Anya Vara and Luke uh, Ling Ling. Uh, we see packages, uh, video. Pa we see video packages from Dynamite of the interaction between Sting and the Young Bucks, and then we head to another break. When we return, we see the Dynamite segment involving Samoa Joe, Hitman Page, and Stuart Strickland. Back inside the arena, the, mur the Murder Hawk monster Lance Archer theme hits, and Fire Pyro explodes as he makes his way out and head it has two ring as he sells in the ring. We see three opponents for he for he and his partners across the ring. His uh partner is the righteous duo of Vincent and Dutch come out next. Uh the bell sounds are officially off running with this one. Vaughn and Vincent kick things off for the respective teams. Vincent dominates from the word go and then tags in Dutch who picks up where he left off of uh, dominating the action with ease. The murder hawk monster tags in and by himself starts taking uh all, all three members of his of, of the position one after the other and, and over and over again <clears throat> all six guys end up in the ring and we see archer and the righteous take them out with ease on route into the victory so the winners are last archer and the righteous all right <clears throat> third match is rio versus trisha dora we see a video package hyping the AW uh, Women's World Championship showdown between Timeless, uh, sorry, uh, uh, between Timeless Tony Storm and Diana Parazzo at Sunday's uh, AW Revolution Tazza 24, and then announced that we will hear from them on AW Collision back inside the arena. Real uh, theme hits, and the inaugural uh, AW Women's World Champion makes her way down to the ring for our next uh, match of the evening. She sells in the ring to a nice pop, and then the theme for Trish Odara plays out and comes her opponent. The bell sounds were officially off running with this one. Rio is flying high, flying, oh, I'm sorry, flying all over the place and running the ropes like crazy, using her speed and quickness to jump out into an early offensive advantage over Adora. She hits a high cross body splash off the top rope to Adora on the floor. Shortly after that, we had to make match commercial break. As the entertained women's uh, singles bout continues, when we return, uh, we see Adora in the lead, and but Rio starts to take over. Rio hits a Northern Lights suplex into a uh, pin attempt, but W. Uh, oh, sorry, oops. But <laughs> Adora kicks off to kick this one alive, running double knees from Rio moments later, and this one. So the winner is Rio. All right. We shoot backstage where Alex Mar Marvez is all was is with the all elite couple Ruby So and Andrew Parker. They're all dressed up to the nines and ready to take their camera crew on their date. Uh, Soraya's brother uh, comes with with she and Harding Cameron and they attack the two. They hold Ruby and make her watch as they beat Parker down. You you needed me, bitch. Soraya uh, Soraya says. To Soho before walking out, we head to another commercial break. On that note, all right, main event time. Ooh, finally, a lot of reading. Um, it's an all star scramble match qualifier Magnus versus Matt Sydal. It's time, it's main event time. We will return from the commercial break, uh, to return, uh, of the pre main event. Uh, Mark Henry set up routine complete. With the world's strongest man wrapping it up with his, it's been enough talk. It's time, it's for tonight's main event cash phrase. After that wraps up the theme for Madness hits and now comes the CML uh star for the all star scramble qualifying match for a spot in the bout on at AW uh, Revolution Twenty Four this Sunday night. The theme for his opponent hits and next out comes Matt Seidel. Seidel tries to shake hands before the match but Magnus uh kicks his hand away. The commentaries Explain that CML can't trust AEW on American uh, or Americans after Claudio Castagnoli's action in the opener. Someone on commentary points out Claudio isn't American. Ouch. Okay, okay. What? I don't know why they bring that up, but okay. Uh, the bell sounds and these two begin to get after it. Seidel, uh does well early on, showcasing his trademark high flying style, but managed to slows him down. And begins taking over as we head to a mid-match commercial break. 
our Lance event advertising time of the evening. When we turn, we see Saito springboarding off the ropes for a high uh, spot attempt, but Madness counters with Angel Angel's wings for a close nerve fall attempt. Uh, Saito takes over again after that, and the crowd starts to come to life a bit in the background. Saito hits a big move and goes for the cover, but only gets two. Saito goes for a springboard spot again. But we see Magnus get out of the way in time. The two trades chops and strikes in the center of the ring. Seidel decks Magnus and then heads to the top row. Uh, Magnus cuts Seidel off the top row, the top, and climbs up. After after he looks for a super uh, plex, but Seidel blocks it and knocks him off. He connects with the top row uh, Minero. For a close two count, Magnus levels Seidel and says it's over in Spanish. Before heading to the top row, the Seidel, uh, that this time Seidel cuts him off. The fans chant, Matt, Matt, as he climbs up. After Magnus, Magnus, uh, tr trips Seidel up on the ropes and then hits a corner to corner running double knee spot. He goes for the cover and gets the win with. The win. Madness qualifies for the All Star Scramble match at AEW Revolution. Ties forward. That's one that goes. Uh, so yeah, the winner is the winner and qualifying for All Star Scramble at AEW Revolution is Magnus. So yeah, good show tonight and all that stuff. And um, yeah. So again, I didn't expect the <laughs> Rock's uh, segment to be so long and all that stuff. So um, yeah, that was it. And um, it was good. It was alright. But yeah, AEW Rampage was a little more better. So, but yeah, anyways, uh, that was all good and games and all that stuff. So, um, if you enjoyed this video, if not, whatever, I don't care. But anyways, uh, so like, subscribe, favorite, and all that stuff. And I'll see you all in the next video. Laters.